Welcome to the Leadonomics Show, and today we have this Asia's productivity guru, Michael Podolinsky. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here. Good to be. It's great to have you here. Tell tell us a little bit about this title, Asia's productivity guru. Right? How did you become productivity guru? Well, basically, for the last 30 years, that's what I've been concentrating on, helping people with their time management, mm -hmm. uh, leading teams more effectively, mm -hmm. uh, making communication work amongst individuals as yep. well as groups uh, and other divisions and whatnot, and then studying it, writing about it, uh, working on it, creating audio programs and whatever else. So it's, it's been my passion. So how did it become your passion? I mean, what, what Was there a trigger that, that got you excited about productivity? Well, you know, I, I, uh, sorry, I, I get frustrated when things don't work the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. I love it when people make promises and deliver on those promises. Right. I get frustrated when people say they're going to do things, don't do things. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking why people don't do things, you know, and it's sometimes the best of intent, but when it comes to actually doing it, they overpromise and underdeliver. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things that lead to that. Yeah. So I just started getting interested and okay. thought, how can we structure systems so that this doesn't happen? Mm. And if people have the right systems in their lives, like Deming said years ago, 85% of the problems right. are systems, not people. So right. let's fix the systems. Let's help people fix their own life systems, mm. and make more money, have more fun, get promoted, right. uh, and make things go smooth. What triggers this? I mean, this, these problems, I mean, you said it's not people, right? Generally. Yeah, generally. So what, what are some symptoms? Well, you know, for example, we get trapped into things that we didn't even set ourselves up for. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we all got phones now. Yeah. Everybody's got a phone and they yeah. live by the phone. You know, the phone is everything in my life, you know. And we'll be sitting here having this conversation and all of a sudden, yeah. and we talk, oh, I'm, I'm paying attention. You're, right. really, you're really important right. to me. And then, then they check out for a minute yeah. and, and then they come, off. oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, where were we? Uh, yep. And there's that little gap. And yeah. then you have to start all over again. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of studies have been showing how people who undergo interruptions mm -hmm. constantly, it starts to program the brain for shorter attention spans mm -hmm. and people with interruptions make 50% more mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, take 50% longer to complete projects and then they wonder why they got to work late. Mm -hmm. work. How do you fix that? I mean, isn't that something that society at large, I mean, especially with the generation, the new generation, right? That's, uh, that's part of the parcel of life, right? Sometimes I feel like I'm jousting at windmills like, like Don Quixote. At, at the same time, if people start to curb a little bit and work, cut back a little bit, they can start to gain control over their lives again. I talk about, you know, in, in our book, three systems. Right. That if, if you're working in one of those systems, you're always going to fail, and that's somebody else's system. Mm. And if you have a project you want to get done, and somebody texts you, and you look at it, you lose that one thought you had that was the one creative mm. idea you were ready to put down, maybe never to get it again. Right. So you're diminishing yourself because you allowed somebody else to do that to you. Mm -hmm. When you're working on something important, off the phone yep. for a little bit. Not forever, right. but for the maybe 90 minutes, and it can change your life. Mm. Now, you've written this book, Productivity, Winning in Life, right? Yeah. So how does one win in life? How does one win in life? <clears throat> I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Uh, obviously. <laughs> well, I <hope> uh, you <laughs> know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a You've lot. You've got uh, how many here? Yeah, yeah, 200 pages, pages yeah. <laughs> and actually, I wrote that book in 26 days. Oh, Normally, it takes okay. a couple of years, four years to research. Well, but I should learn from you. <laughs> well, what happened was it just, it, it's been what I've been living, so it just flowed out of me. How do you make people productive in life? First of all, you got to start with some kind of a passion in life. Mm. And I, I disagree with people who say, well, you got to find your one passion. Yeah. You know, if you have your, your one passion, yeah. well, what if you never find your one? Well, you have many, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm convinced everybody has dozens. Yeah. But it's just using them. Try to, I get people in the book to write down at least 10 passions that they have. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's music. Maybe it's fishing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, uh, you know, reading. Yep. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's... Uh, you know, photography, right. maybe it's art, maybe it's whatever it is, and try to bring those into your life every day. Even, even in the workplace? Especially in the workplace. Well, what we, if you're an accountant and your passion is music, say? It, okay, so who's to say you can't listen to music while you're doing your accounts work? You know, uh, one of our clients, Microsoft, mm. I think they make software. Uh, they I, have, I think so. Yeah, they, have a <laughs> they used to at least. They, yeah, <laughs> and they, they found out that if they put 40, 40, 40 people in closed offices right. as programmers, they could get the same amount of work done as 100 in open offices. Mm. And by having a closed door, you can play your own music, mm. you can look at posters on the wall, you got your own environment, you can dress casual, feel mm. good, and then as a result, creativity flows because you engage your limbic system where the creativity comes from. 
more productive. Yep. Okay, so bringing music in your life can actually make you more productive. Mm -hmm. I disagree with any company that says they won't let people stream in uh, their music off their favorite uh, internet mm -hmm. station, you know? Mm -hmm. They should be able to. It's, uh, it's making sure that if they're going to use it, that it's for something that's positive. Right, so it starts with passion. Yeah, it starts with passion. And then, and then how else? A plan. A plan. Yeah, most okay. people have no plan. Okay. With plan for what life or well leaders we all know in leadership yeah you yep. know, those who fail to plan plan okay, to fail yep, down and yep, yep. but it's true yep. and most people don't have a long-term vision so I always encourage people to start with a long-term vision where would you like to go people say well I I don't know yeah. you know I, yeah, I, I, mean that, I just but it I doesn't just go they just go but start with something what did you want to be when you were in school what did you want to be uh, when you first got out of school, what did you right. want to be 20 years ago? I mean, you, there's usually something we're heading for and then we get detoured. Mm. Uh, if you start with a long-range plan, you begin to notice things you wouldn't normally notice. Mm. And particularly if you write out that plan, where you want to go. Yeah. Writing clarifies our thinking. You know, the brain is just like a computer hard drive, mm -hmm. fragments information. Yeah. Yeah. If you write it down, it tends to put it in one spot so you can access it quickly and then go from there. And as a result of that clarity of vision, you begin to notice things. It's like if you buy a car. Right. I mean, you don't just one day buy a car. Yep. You know, you plan, oh, I want this brand because it's, oh, yeah. And then I want this model because, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I want this color and I want this interior and everything. Well, the plan gets you thinking about it. You finally buy it. You right. drive it out within five minutes you notice 20 more exactly yeah. like yeah. it. Which you never noticed before. Yeah, right? and even the driver looks like you, you know. And at a subconscious level, it, it, we decided to make this purchase because of that, you know, they, it influenced us. Mm. And once you write out this plan of where you want to go, right. and hopefully even set some goals towards getting there, some things you need to learn, some right. ideas you want to acquire, it's like the blinkers come off mm. and we see the opportunities that were there all along. Right. Interesting, interesting. So what, what would be the third aspect? Well, once you got, got a plan and you got your, your long-range vision, you got a plan, you got goals in place, then you got to start setting your priorities on things you really want to do. Okay. Most people will let... Set your priorities in relation to your vision. Yes. Okay. Everything, dink -a dink -a dink in line yep. and helping you work. Otherwise, if you do this, this, and this, and this, you end up with a hodgepodge. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, but if you say, okay, these are in line with my goals, which are in line with my life's ambition, you're going to get more done. So I came up with a simple system on, on prioritizing A, B, C, D, E. Okay. And it, it just really works. You list maybe 30 projects you got to do. Right. And out of those 30 projects, you list either A, B, C initially. Mm -hmm. And A's are the all important, B's are the, the basic right. business kind of dated yep. operations, C's are clerical, administrative yep. kinds of things. Uh, and then put the letter D any, to an, next to anything that you either have delegated could delegate or really should be delegating mm, mm. and get those off your yeah, plates, get somebody okay. else happily involved, outsource. Yeah. Uh, I've only got two people in our business, mm -hmm. but about a hundred virtual team members. And so, you know, my printer does yeah. this, yeah. my folks at McGraw Hill do this. Yeah. Uh, I do a lot of work with Singapore Institute of Management, so these people do that. Yeah. I got uh, my accountant guy who takes care of books and so forth. So okay. you, you get all these people in, in, in line and you delegate what you can. And you should be delegating almost everything that's a B and almost everything that's a C. Mm. So then the E's are the eliminates, and that's the tough part. Mm. Today there are so many things to do. How do you get it all done? So we gotta start putting letter E next to things that really don't matter that much. Yeah. Eliminate them. Because and those are the toughest to eliminate. Yeah, yeah. Because you just want <laughs> yeah. or and you think it's important. Yeah. And we keep adding more and more stuff. Right. It's the insanity, like where CEOs keep adding more levels of management control yeah. until people spend their entire day yeah. filling out paperwork right. and nobody's doing their core job. Yeah. Well, with A, B, C, D, E, when you look at your A's, if you've got five of them, you number one through five. Mm -hmm. And B's, you're number one B to B or not to B. Uh, 3B, 4. And number 1C, 2C, C, 3PO, 4C, 5. I'm sorry. I love okay. Star Wars. I yeah, grew up with that. So you're a Star Wars fan, huh? Uh, ever <laughs> since I saw my first one and uh, fell in love with it, yeah. Uh, West, uh, we cowboy Western movie in space. What a, what an odd thought. <laughs> okay. So, so you've mentioned four. Is that a, is that a fifth step? Or? Well, doing it, you know. I mean, and that's where determination perseverance. really counts, perseverance. You know, it's one thing to try and you fall down and you get up again, but when you keep 
getting beat down, but you keep getting up again. I, it, it's the old thing, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, sometimes I worry for people that don't have that ability, haven't learned. It doesn't yeah, come yeah, natural. Yeah, it, is, it is something you learned, yeah. It is something, yeah. And I learned it from my old karate instructor. I've been doing martial arts 40 years. Okay. And he had me play full contact karate. Now look at me. Okay. I'm, I'm not, look pretty good. while I'm not the biggest guy you've ever seen, this yep. is one of the reasons I moved to Asia. Uh, <laughs> you seem relatively big. Here. <clears throat> well, yeah, well, I'm bigger. almost normal height for a woman, <laughs> or a P3 student, one or the other. Um, but, you know, I started karate because I, I was the smallest kid in school, not yep. the smallest boy, yeah. smallest kid. Yep. I mean, the girls were bigger than me. Yep. They used to beat up on me. And I'd get in fights all the time, particularly with a name like Podolinsky. It sounds like a skin disease. <laughs> You, know, you got the Podolinsky, yeah, put a little tiger bomb, maybe it goes away, I don't know. But I, and my style of fighting didn't work. Someone throw a punch, I block with my eye. <laughs> you know, they, they want to come in, you want to come more? I got more here, I got another one for you. I like that. But, uh, <laughs> but basically, you know, I, I, I get beat up all the time, so I finally got tired of it, and I started taking karate, thinking I could beat up on the guys right. who are, right. you know, having a field day with me. And once I got started in karate, I never got in another fight in school again. No one knew, so it wasn't like anybody yeah, was afraid yeah, of me. Yeah. But the difference is, when you walk into a room, you're not afraid, yeah. and bullies smell fear. Yeah. So, so I learned the confidence. By doing full contact karate, uh, I wasn't that good. Mm. And, and that's not false humility. I mean, I'll show you the 18 stitches here, I'll show you the 46 stitches on my knees, uh, I'll show you the stitches under, I mean, uh, but I was more afraid of my karate instructor than any opponent. Yep. If I quit, he was going <laughs> to give me a worse trashing than anybody else. And, and as a result, I'd keep fighting no matter how much pain I was in until the other guy couldn't take the pain. Mm. And what a lesson in life. Mm. Y you know, there's only two times we fail. Yep. When we quit yep. or we fail to try. Mm. And a lot of people fail to try, but those that quit, they never get a chance to win they were so close yeah. as long as you keep fighting yeah. you don't lose right. you're still in, in it yep. Yep. yeah and that that's what that's what a leader needs is that ability to keep getting up and no matter how much and not following the safe easy path but right. trying something new uh, that ability to stick with it no matter how much it hurts mm. no, a lot of things that you talk about uh, is very much about being a good leader right sure and, and is that really a, I mean as part of productivity you you believe that leaders have to be very productive then right well, they're setting the pace mm. and for a the team. Role models, right? Yeah, and, and role models. Mm. And we lead by example. There's only one kind of leadership, lead by example. You mm. can't say, don't do like I do, do like I tell you to do. Yeah, yeah. My, my grandpa used to say that to my dad. Hey, which is don't do like I do, do like I tell you to do. You don't speak Slovak, huh? No, I don't. Unfortunately, I'll pick it up. Yeah, well, that's about all I know of myself. Uh, and then my dad tried that on me. My dad hated it from his dad. He tried it on me, I hated it. Well, I got my kid now and he's not hearing it. <laughs> the only way he hears it is as a lesson of something I don't want you to do. Yeah. We lead by our example. Exactly. And that is if a leader is unproductive, like if I stay late, you, you stay, stay late. late. Yeah, yeah. I had you a know? boss like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think everybody has at some point. And if I waste my time this way, you're gonna waste your time that way. Mm. Um, and you can't tell people, be productive, mm. care about people, care about the customer. Mm. When they are, you know, hey, you know, yeah. they're, they're not good to their people. Yep. You want to teach somebody to be good to a, to a customer, to a, to a guest, to right. a client, you got to treat your people like a guest, like mm -hmm. a client. Mm -hmm. You want people to be on time, you got to be on time. Right. Uh, you want people to work hard, you, you work hard. Yeah. And you want people to volunteer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to volunteer. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I agree. No, uh, when, when you talk about productivity, uh, when a person first starts, you know, say a person graduates from the university, and comes out into the workplace, you know, what are some tips or nuggets of wisdom that you would give to a college grad uh, with regards to being, to living productively? Okay, A number one, you can't learn it all yourself. I mean, you can try to make every mistake, mm. <laughs> but you, you just can't live by making every mistake. You gotta learn through OPE, other people's experience. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I'd highly recommend you get a mentor. Mm. You see somebody you, who's older than you, more knowledgeable, doing a good job, yep. and ask them point blank, if I buy you lunch, can I ask you a few questions? Mm. This is something I learned from one of my mentors back in the 70s, a guy by the name of E. James Rohn. Okay. And he said, poor people should be taking rich people to lunch to yep. find out how they got rich. Yep. And you know, funny thing is I found in my own experience, I've got 30, 40 mentors. Uh, 
if you ask somebody, nine times out of 10, they say yes, and they're flattered. The one time out of 10, they say no, because I'm too busy, they still think better of you. You've made a friend, an ally. And by the way, if there's ever retrenchment at work sometime, and you ask someone to be your mentor, and he said no, if it's between you and one other person, who's going to get the job? Yeah. It's going to be the boss's son. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> that plus. <laughs> that never. But, you know, the idea is you got a better chance, a better shot at it. So asking people, and then you uh, ask them good questions. And by the way, do not, there's something really, kids, mm-hmm. should not ask for advice and then not follow it. Mm-hmm. If you ask for advice, follow it. Mm-hmm. And if you cannot follow it because you're not ready, thank that person, write them a note, and then don't ask them for any more advice <laughs> until you've done what they've already told you to do. Right. Right. And maybe it wasn't the right mentor, maybe you weren't, ready yet as that person yeah. but you know follow people's advice that's that's a number one mm-hmm. a, a second thing was be a sponge you know be a sponge absorb everything, absorb everything. Uh, ask and volunteer work you know work on things not just what you're supposed to but also ask and volunteer on other things a it's a good for networking connections and b you keep learning and i was just mentioning it today to some uh people over at uh at the bookstore we were talking to and said uh, the difference, that's something I learned from Charles Tremendous Jones in 1982, yeah. was the difference between who we are today and who we'll be in five years' time, yeah. the people we meet and the books we read. Yeah. So read a lot. Uh, read a lot, meet a lot. Mm. What is it? Simply, yeah. read a lot, meet a lot. You know, and you're going to get better, you're going to get stronger. And you'll broaden your yeah. exposure. Yeah, okay. sure. Well, what, if, what if I'm a CEO of a company uh, and I come to you for advice and productivity? What advice would you give me? Well, for CEOs, uh, it some of it is, you know, again, leadership by example, but I think very important is when they do their planning, plan for productivity. Mm-hmm. Don't just plan for business growth. I mean, you've got to plan for people productivity. Systems are great. Uh, you know, a Six Sigma, ISO 9000, mm-hmm. and all this one, you know, balanced scorecard. Wonderful, wonderful things. But you've got to develop your people along the way. Mm-hmm. Give them blocks of time when they can work. Mm-hmm. The shock, absolute shock today, is that in 90 minutes, the average person only gets 20 minutes worth of work done mm. because of perpetual interruptions. Yeah. Brr, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, 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 no, okay, I'll do that later. And the one thought's gone. Yeah. Ring, 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 and yeah. the one thought's gone. So giving people a 90-minute, what I call a 90-minute marvel, a 90-minute uninterrupted block of time, mm. they will experience, and I'm not joking, they'll experience a company-wide 30% boost in productivity, I can prove it, can show it. Mm. They haven't tried it, they'll get it. And reason being, no additional plant personnel equipment is going to get you anything near there. But mm. 90 minutes where you're not getting interrupted, at least internally, yep. where they can focus on their work, uh, they can, they're easily going to get uh, a good 90 minute block five, four or five times a week. Right. And as a result, it doesn't work every day but at least four or five times a week, no interruptions, they get so much more work done. Mm-hmm. Uh, stress levels go down, people become more productive. Fantastic. You know, you've, you've written, what, 14 books now? Yeah. And this is your latest productivity winning in life? Yes. Why should we buy this book? The last question. Okay, <laughs> well, you don't have to buy the book unless you want to be more productive, make more money, advance your career, and have a happier life. Which means we have to buy it, right? Well, (laughs) you know, seriously, it's got the best of everything I've ever put into it, and I think it's really a solid book. It's a holistic book to work on everything from your passions to your balance in life, to improve your family, to make you better at work, and to really get enjoyment and satisfaction from life. It's not just about the money. Money's important. Money's a good thing. But it's a tool. It's about having joy, and satisfaction in life. Fantastic. And this is available in all bookstores nationwide, uh, right? Yes, it should be available in all the bookstores. Uh, McGraw-Hill book and Productivity Winning in Life. And um, I'd happy to have uh, people come up, bring it up to me, and I'd love to autograph it. Fantastic. Here we have it on the Leader Omic Show, Michael Polensky. Polensky. Mike, thank you so much for thank being you. on the show. Great to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Thank you.